I personally love it when creators that I follow do Q&A sessions. So today, I'm just gonna do a fun, interactive Q&A session where I take questions that you have submitted on YouTube and Instagram and just answer them. Pretty complicated. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, all right, I'm gonna kick it off with, with a good one. Uh, as someone who isn't good at guitar, did it make you nervous to start a YouTube channel about guitars? Yes and no. It's not something that I get really nervous about. Um, I don't like, I get nervous playing in front of people or playing live. I sort of choke. <laughs> like I don't do well at that. Um, and I don't think I suck at guitar, but my thing is that my, my channel and what I do is not built around the value proposition of watching me be good at guitar. That's not what I try to do. So it doesn't make me nervous. Like if I was trying to you know, be a great guitarist and playing, that would make me nervous because I would be trying to be something that I'm not. Um, again, I don't think I'm a bad guitarist. I think I'm, I'm creative. I think I am better than I probably let on, uh, but it's hard for me to display that, especially in YouTube videos, because when it comes to the playing sections, a lot of people want, you know, the fast lead stuff and all that. And for me, I just like chords and simple things. I would much rather be like a great, simple songwriter than someone who could shred. My channel is much more built around my ability to tell stories about guitars, to attempt humor, and to bring a slightly different level of filmmaking to the space. Uh, let's see, what do you think about the Fender Telecaster Deluxe? I like it. Uh, if it's Telecaster, I like it. What do you play more, the Tele or the Les Paul Special? Special. No questions, but I do like your YouTube channel very much. Keep doing the good thing. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you for watching. I got a couple of questions about uh, how long I've been playing guitar, so I'm just gonna combine these. Uh, hello, maybe you've already said it, but why and when did you start playing guitar? And the other one was, how long have you been playing guitar? For some reason you strike me as someone who played when they were younger and somewhat recently got reinvigorated. If I'm right, what was the catalyst? You are correct. Uh, I started playing in 96. Um, no, I wasn't dedicated to it. Uh, you know, I just sort of did it sporadically. I would say it was like the end of 97 that I really was like, oh man, I love this. And I played a lot. Um, it was all acoustic. I had an acoustic guitar. I played constantly for probably, I don't know, six, seven, eight years. Um, and then it kind of tailed off a little bit. And then, so like the mid 2000s, I played, but not a lot. And not, I didn't practice. I would just pick it up and sort of noodle or play some stuff. Um, and then around 2000, 10, 2011, I put a bunch of stuff in storage. Uh, some of it went to my mom's place, like my guitar, and I had sold everything for the most part that I owned, quit my job, and I was riding my bike around the Western United States. Um, and then I just never went back and got it for like five years. So from like 2010 to 2016, I didn't play like almost at all. Um, eventually went back and got it, and then played a little, not too much. And then in 2018, I got really into electric guitar and that sort of changed everything for me. I had always loved electric guitar. I just never really wanted to deal with it or play with it. Um, you know, the, the few times that I had played it, you know, I was so kind of like heavy handed and like rhythm oriented that I just felt like I was not making anything that, that sounded good. So um, yeah, I was definitely reinvigorated by the electric guitar in particular the Telecaster, which I've always just loved. Um, and so once I sort of went down that road, it just reignited the instrument for me. Um, and I am kind of back to being obsessed. Has having a YouTube channel changed your playing? Yes, uh, for better and for worse, actually. Um, because I spend so much time trying to make the videos and you know looking at guitars and all that stuff, it, it definitely impacts how much time I spend playing guitar, which is weird to have, uh, I make videos about guitars and making those videos about guitars means that I spend a lot less time actually playing guitar. Um, so that's been tough. It has sort of forced me to, I'm trying to learn more songs now than I ever have before simply because I need something to, to play in the videos. And a lot of times I write the thing or whatever, um, and it just takes a lot of time. So if I can just sit down and bust out a tune that people know or whatever, um, it just simplifies that process for me quite a bit. So I have, struggled with playing less, um, but I've also dedicated my more of my time to learning actually how to play real songs. Tell the truth, do companies pay you to say good things about them? <laughs> no, no, they don't. Um, in fact, I'm gonna read you an email 
uh, from a company, hold on. So this is from a company that I can't say what it is just yet because they uh, released some products at NAMM that I'm going to be reviewing um, and I can't show you what they are, but this is literally what they, what they said. Um, they had, I had reached out to them, I don't know, six, seven months ago, um, and they just contacted me and said, hey, do you wanna review these handful of products? I said, yes, and this was their response. Great, what we definitely want is a focused video on each product, okay. You can navigate that in whichever creative way you choose. A couple of notes. And then they just list out some of the features of their products that they would like me to, to make sure that I talk about. And then at the end, they say, other than that, do your thing with it. Thanks. Like that's it. I've never had a, a guitar company try to bribe me. I've never had ever. That's just never happened. Nobody sees the videos before I publish them. Nobody reviews them. Nobody tells me what I can or can't say. Um, if they tried to, I would be like, I'm out later. I would just never do that. Um, one, for my own personal integrity, but two, the second an audience finds out that you've been lying to them, it's over. I would never put in this much work um, to just throw it all away on a on a lie for a, a few bucks, it's, that's crazy. I would never do that. Are you going to produce and sell any merch? Um, probably not. Uh, I've, I've thought it'd be kind of fun like to mix, you know, like, you know, like a hoodie and have like the Telecaster neck, you know, here and the Les Paul Special neck here. I thought that'd be kind of cool. Um, I thought about making one that just says, you know, go play guitar or, some of the other lines that I use quite a bit, like we'll start at the neck and work our way down. Some of those things would be kind of fun. I don't know if it would be totally worthwhile to do that. You know, it's not a moneymaker thing. It just would be like another thing that I have to do. That would be fun for sure. Um, but I don't really want to take it on right now. So no. I thought you said never buy anything from China, but you have an Eastman. Way to be a hypocrite. <laughs> uh, I'm assuming that this person is referring to my Amazon pedal video, which has certainly upset plenty of people. Uh, that's not what I said. Congratulations on being intentionally obtuse. Uh, I did not say don't ever buy anything from China. I said I try to avoid buying tons of stuff from China because I think it's become a real issue, um, just both both for our, com our country's economy and um, national security, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, and in terms of Amazon, I wasn't saying that you can't buy stuff from China. I was saying Amazon has dramatically rigged the game uh, in a way that makes it anti-competitive, uh, what I would consider anti-capitalist behavior that is honestly kind of illegal. That's what I have a problem with. Um, I may not have stated it quite that well, but I definitely didn't say you can never buy anything that isn't from the United States. Hey, how do I get free guitars? <laughs> I don't know. I don't get free guitars. Uh, even the times the companies send me a guitar, I'm doing a load of work uh, to make the videos and produce them. If I calculated the equipment as payment, I'm, it's minimum wage. I'm not, you could be a phenomenal musician. Uh, you could be someone who has built an audience on a social media platform and then companies want to use you uh, to promote their stuff. Um, you could rob a guitar shop. I don't know. What's the go-to riff to get attention from the ladies? Uh, I don't know. I have not been on the market for some time and I'm mostly old and tired now, so I don't do that. Um, but I do know that back in the mid to late 90s, uh, the shortest distance between friend zone and making out was knowing how to play Crash by the Dave Matthews Band. What's your background on filmmaking? You're clearly good at it. Uh, I've been making, thank you by the way, I've been making professional video probably for like 11 years now, so I have quite a background in it. I've worked with you know brands and agencies um, all over the country and in Europe and all that stuff. So I am. Um, Strat versus Telly, why or why not for each? Uh, I don't have any why nots for each. I only have yeses for each. I personally prefer a Telecaster. Um, I just, I don't know why. I just like them better. Well, I do know why. For me, a Strat, like the greatest sounds that I've ever heard in my life have come from Stratocasters, whether it was Jimmy, Rory, Clapton, Stevie Ray Vaughan, John Mayer, uh, who he takes way too much crap for. I'm not like a huge fan of his music, but that guy is a genius guitar player. Can we just all kind of just move on of the John Mayer debate? Um, you know, those sounds are just honestly, the, it's the greatest guitar sounds that I've ever heard ever um, have come from a Strat. 
The problem is the greatest sounds that I've ever heard of have come from a Strat. So when I pick one up and I play a Strat, I go, this doesn't sound like the greatest thing I've ever heard. What the hell? Um, I just feel really kind of trapped. When, when I pick up a Strat, I just sort of feel trapped by the ghosts of the geniuses who have played them and have ingrained that sound into so many of our brains. And I just, I don't know, I, I struggle with it. I know it's just probably stupid, it's a personal thing, but um, I love Strats. I, they're incredible instruments. I, if I had to pick one sound to listen to from somebody who's really good at guitar, it would be a Strat. I just don't get on with them that much. I love Telecasters. Uh, everyone's favorite raccoon, if you've been on some of the live streams, you know who he is. He submitted a bunch of questions. So we're gonna do a, a bit of a lightning round to finish this off. Which YouTube channels are in your top five? I don't know. I, the ones that I watch the most right now are probably like Danny Gewurz, James Matthews, Jesse Driftwood, Paul Davids, Awaken with JP. Um, I definitely watch guitar like Rick Beato, Chris Buck, um, you know, I watch quite a few YouTube guitar channels, but they're not necessarily my top five. I tend to watch things a lot more on like filmmaking, comedy stuff, um, and some music. Other than that, it's things that I'm searching for like specifically. Is pop punk like Green Day or Blink-182 actual punk? No, it's pop punk. <laughs> Uh, like when I listen to real punk, it makes me like burn things down and start revolutions. When I listen to like Green Day or Blink-182, I like it, but it makes me just kind of like want to get high and play video games. That's, or pretend I'm a teenager again. What's your favorite beer? Whiskey. Would you consider producing a channel track using instrumental, lyrical, and vocal input from your subscribers? Yes, and I feel like you've been spying on me because I'm working on a video right now called I'm starting a band with the world. That's right, the world. Um, yeah, I would love, I don't know how, how to figure out the mechanism of it. We'd have to have some type of community to, to share the tracks with, and that's not easy on a place like YouTube, but I would love to collaborate and literally start a band with people uh, this, that is part of this community from all over the world. I think that'd be amazing. Would you do song reactions or reviews that subscribers suggest? I've thought about doing that, and the reason that I don't, because like I love it when Rick Beato does those, those breakdowns, the reason that I don't do it is that I wouldn't have any way of talking about that stuff intelligently other than I would listen to a song and go like, I like that. Or I don't really like that. Like that, I think that would kind of be my breakdown of it. I don't, I wouldn't know what to talk about uh, on that kind of a thing. So that's why I don't do any like reaction style videos. And finally, have you reached all the big milestones you wanted or are there more you want to achieve? I assume you're talking about the YouTube channel specifically. Um, I don't really have any milestones for the channel. Um, you know, when I hit 4,000 subscribers a little bit ago, I was like, man, what if I got to 10,000? Um, so I guess like that would be cool. You know, I love I loved seeing the channel grow, but it's not the thing that really drives me. For me, I, I just sit down and go, what, what's the best thing that I can make this time? Like, how do I make the best video that I'm capable of? Um, that's what drives me. And I, I don't, I never hit it. I never produce the best possible video that I can um, just because primarily of time constraints, you know, this is a thing I do on the side. And so I, I'm up late nights uh, working on the stuff, editing videos. You know, I think the amount of work that goes into a YouTube channel is surprising and most people probably don't understand or even care, it doesn't matter. That's not the point. But, um, you know, in terms of milestones, I just try to do the best I can and everything else kind of shakes itself out. That was really fun. Uh, thank you all for participating as always in the channel and in this video in particular. I really appreciate it. I'll try to do more of these. Now, as always, go play guitar.